Fisher, WHUR News with Politics 963 on WHUR.com. I'm here with Charles Ellison, who is a contributing editor for The Root.com. Charles, thanks for joining me. I appreciate hey, thank it. Thank you. Yeah, let, 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 right, let's right, first, right. good to see you good again. See let's you, yeah. first jump right mm -hmm. into the situation in Charlottesville, right. Virginia, and where we are now. Of course, mm -hmm. we've had deadly violence over the weekend. Mm -hmm. The president stepped up and then stepped back on Saturday, came back two days mm -hmm. later to disavow the KKK, the right. Nazis, right. and other white supremacists. Where are we now as we kind of look back over the past four days or so? Right, you know, so right now, as far as the president is concerned, you know, a lot of folks, he's still under a lot of heat, and not just from folks on the left or progressives or Democrats, but also people within his own party who were saying, you know, that wasn't sincere enough because you should have came out strong at the very onset of that violence. Really, he's been playing racial dog whistle politics since he announced his run for presidency and so everyone knows that um, you know and it's really it's it's a simple matter of you know Trump not being inclined to uh, to to say anything bad or to insult anyone who likes him and so you know white supremacist groups neo-nazis the Ku Klux Klan they like Donald Trump so he's not inclined to criticize them and that's really the point here and also uh, folks within the Republican Party even though they uh, came out with some very strongly worded statements about uh, how these are domestic terrorists these these various extremist groups and they should be condemned uh, Republicans should have been out in the front of this before that violence had sparked in Charlottesville and a lot of people are saying that that they kind of helped create this by constantly appeasing uh, to that part of the base which is into that sort of extremist hate um, that incites violence. So, you know, a few things are going on right now, you know, in the wake of Charlottesville, one, we have to pay attention to this big governor's race that's coming up in Virginia. And that I, I found that very odd. No one really talking about over the weekend that Virginia has a major governor's race coming up that right now in the polls is neck and neck. Uh, the Republican nominee is a former chair of the Republican National Com uh, Committee, uh, Ed Gillespie. And Ed Gillespie has been sort of sympathizing with folks who support uh, Confederate statues and the rebel flag. He doesn't want to criticize those groups. So, you know, I was really kind of uh, a, a bit befuddled that Democrats didn't come out strong against the Republican nominee and are not trying to mobilize voters in Virginia to send a very strong political signal that this type of activity, this type of language, this type of violence is not going to be tolerated. So I think there needs to be a national conversation about that. And one last point too, there has to be a national conversation about open carry states. Mm -hmm. So you know, you're in Charlottesville and you see people walking around with, with semi-automatic rifles, they've got guns on their hol in, in their holsters. Um, that's very troubling. And so you know, you're seeing also these rallies being organized in open carry states. And so that's, that's something that we're also going to have to explore where you have people who are in these extremist groups more well armed than the law enforcement and the law enforcement stepping back. That's also something that was very peculiar and very troubling at the Charlottesville incident. Real quick, because you, you mentioned a key point. We've already seen what appears to be a wave of organized mm -hmm. and elected officials, for example, right pushing to have these Confederate statues removed. Baltimore, right. also uh, in the state capitol, and we just saw recently, even in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, Durham, yeah. Yeah, groups pulling down these statues. Has this event over the weekend mm -hmm. re-energized that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it has, you know, folks are, are revisiting in, in these different towns, particularly in the South, in places like Baltimore. Baltimore, incidentally, was, was technically, that was the uh, the very first casualties of the Civil War were in Baltimore. The very first battle was in Baltimore, right? So, um, you know, people are revisiting that, particularly in these southern cities like a Durham, like in New Orleans and, and elsewhere. One, one thing that I think, you know, in stepping back and looking at all of this, I think the most important thing is that we also need to have a big national history lesson about the Civil War. We look at polling data all the time on this where, you know, a lot of people on both sides of this debate don't even know uh, much about the Civil War or much about slavery. So I think this is also an opportunity for us to have a big national refresh on Civil War history or on these very uncomfortable moments in American history. That, that could really add a lot of really necessary texture to the conversation uh, for both sides and it could, and could help us nationally kind of move forward. Charles Ellison, contributing editor with TheRoot.com. Always good to see you. Thanks Always good to see so you, Harold. All right. And certainly you can stay with us on all of our social media platforms. That, of course, includes Twitter, 
on Facebook and on Instagram. Don't forget it's politics96963. And don't forget the hashtag, stay woke.